The movie opens in a quiet neighborhood on a fine, sunny morning. We see one of the residents, Shannon, in her attic, anxiously wrapping something in cloth. Moments later, she comes out of the house and dumps that object in the trash can. She then lets her daughter, Claire, ride her bicycle along the street. The family dog also joins in on the fun, and it appears to be a normal day for the kid. However, things quickly take a grim turn when Claire returns to the house. She goes to find her mom in the attic, only to discover that the woman has committed the unthinkable. The movie then cuts to several years later, where a grown-up Claire suddenly wakes up from her sleep. Turns out that she's still having nightmares about her mother's death. She now lives with her single father, Jonathan, who works as a garbage collector. The family dog, Max, has also grown up, and he is her best friend. After getting ready, Claire heads to school on her bicycle. She greets her neighbor, Mrs. DeLuca, on the way, and also comes across her maternal uncle, August. The old man is trying to retrieve his newspaper, but Claire offers to get it for him. As she turns her bicycle around, the school bully Darcy arrives from the opposite direction. Claire manages to swerve just in time, but she crashes on the floor and scrapes her knee. Regardless, she goes to school, where she spots her father dumpster diving with his friend. Hey baby, found some Cheerios! This embarrasses the teenager, and she angrily confronts him about it. Jonathan claims that he's just trying to find something useful, but when Claire urges him to leave, he obliges. In the next scene, we get to know that Claire is often bullied by the popular kids. They regard her as a dumb loser. <laughs> God, who comes from a poor family. This becomes even more evident when the meanest bully Darcy throws a drink at Claire's poster, which she had been working on for months. Claire's only friends at school are June and Meredith, and they seem to have a good bond, but this is only because all three of them are equally unpopular. We also get to know that Claire has a massive crush on a popular guy named Paul. The sad thing, however, is that he already has a girlfriend. Elsewhere, as Jonathan is dumpster diving in the neighborhood, he finds a vintage music box. He decides to keep it as it looks really fancy from the outside. Back at school, Claire finally decides to confront Darcy. She approaches her and calls her a smegma in front of everyone. Gross. This, of course, upsets Darcy and she slaps Claire across the face, but our girl also retaliates with a right hand of her own. One thing leads to another and they end up having a cat fight. Their classmates don't even try to stop them. They're just busy taking videos of the encounter. But, fortunately, before the matter can escalate, a teacher arrives at the scene and breaks up the fight. When Claire reaches home, her dad says that he's got something for her. She then goes to her room and finds a wrapped object in her bed. Claire opens it, and we get to know that it's the same vintage music box her dad had found earlier. She tries to open it, but it's firmly locked. There are some words written in Chinese, and Claire deciphers the first sentence, which says, Seven Wishes. However, she doesn't believe in all this, so she places the box on her table and gets back to work. A while later, she receives a text from her friend, informing her to check Darcy's Instagram post. Claire then goes online and finds out that the bully has posted the video of their earlier fight. She has also uploaded a separate video of Jonathan dumpster diving in the school. Humiliated and angry, Claire decides to give the strange box a shot. She places her hands on it and wishes that Darcy would just rot. After making her first wish, Claire realizes that she has left Max outside. She opens the door for him, but the dog refuses to enter. He simply stares at the box, almost as if he sensed something paranormal normal, or maybe it just smells because it was in the garbage. That night, after Claire falls asleep, the mysterious box opens on its own and starts playing some music. However, it quickly stops and closes before Claire can find out. In the morning, Darcy wakes up to a horrific sight. Most of her body has turned black and is covered with bruises. Turns out she's contracted necrotizing facetis from her visit to the spa. When the news reaches the school, Claire can't help but wonder if her wish is responsible for this. At home, she takes a picture of the mysterious box to research about it later. Since Max is not around, she decides to look for him outside. Soon, Claire hears strange noises coming from the crawl space, so she goes inside to investigate. To her horror, she finds her dead dog being eaten by rats. This breaks the poor teenager, because Max was gifted to her by her late mother. Later, Jonathan and his friend help bury the dog, while Claire cries her heart out. The following day at school, she approaches her Chinese teacher and 
shows him the characters engraved on the mystery box. She asks for his help in deciphering it. However, the teacher reveals that the engravings are in ancient Chinese, so only a scholar can translate them. Hearing their conversation, one of the students named Ryan offers to help her. He claims that his cousin is studying ancient Chinese, so she can probably decipher the message. However, Claire doesn't trust him, so she refuses his offer and leaves. That was a one in a million offer. She had no reason to turn it down. That night at home, she checks her crush, Paul's Instagram profile, and drools over him. With nothing to lose, she turns to the box and makes her second wish that Paul will fall madly in love with her. Lo and behold, the next day at school, he approaches her near the locker. He then flirts with Claire despite his girlfriend being next to him. At home, the mystery box starts playing on its own again. Simultaneously, at Uncle August's residence, he is trying to take a bath when he suddenly slips and hits his head on the bathtub. This results in his immediate demise. When Claire reaches home that evening, she receives the unfortunate news from her father. Jonathan also reveals that their uncle left nothing for them in his will. Frustrated, Claire quickly goes to her room and makes her third wish that Uncle August leaves his entire property in her name. Just a few minutes later, Jonathan receives a call from the authorities, informing him that Claire will inherit all of her uncle's assets. This leaves them in complete shock, but they quickly pack their stuff and move to the Grand Mansion. Now that Claire is finally rich, she wastes no time and starts spending her uncle's money. She even takes her friends on a shopping spree to show off her wealth. That night, Claire finally spots the music box playing on its own, but she is completely unaware of the danger that is about to befall her neighbor, Mrs. DeLuca. As the poor woman is working in the kitchen, she accidentally turns on the waste disposal machine. It catches her hair and pulls her scalp apart, killing her on the spot. The music box must be a fan of death metal. The following day at school, an obsessed Paul breaks up with his girlfriend and proposes to Claire. He also asks her out on a date, but she requests some time to think about it. In the evening, Claire finally decides to take Ryan's help to find out more about the box. He happily takes her to his cousin Gina's apartment for proper investigation. Gina then takes a look at the box and claims that it's a Chinese wish pot, which grants seven wishes. She also finds the letters Lu Mei written on it and theorizes that she was the owner. Upon researching the name on the internet, the group learns that Lu Mei's entire family was killed by some bad guys. So, she took her music box and prayed for days until the demon answered her. Lu Mei then used the power of the demon to vanquish all her enemies and become rich, but in the end, she committed the unthinkable for reasons unknown. Gina then tries to decipher the rest of the writings, but they're written in a much more complex dialect. So, she takes a picture and sends it to her friend for more information. Everyone in this small town studies Chinese. In the next scene, as Ryan and Claire are heading home, she once again finds her dad dumpster diving. Filled with rage, she goes home and makes her fourth wish that her dad will be less embarrassing. To her delight, Jonathan immediately turns into a cool guy, and he starts playing saxophone in front of her friends. Cool, he has evolved into a pervert. Elsewhere, Gina gets an email from her friend regarding the translation. When she reads it, she is shocked to the core. Back at Claire's house, the mystery box starts playing an eerie song on its own, indicating that it's about to kill again. Simultaneously, Gina's room experiences a power outage, prompting her to rush outside. She tries to call Ryan to inform him about the mystery box's actual truth, but a gust of wind drops her phone from the balcony. Gina then hurries inside her room, but she accidentally trips and impales herself on a sharp statue. This results in her unfortunate death. In the morning, Ryan discovers her shattered phone on the floor. He reads the typed message that she was about to send him last night, and this makes him really worried. He then rushes to Gina's room, only to find her lifeless body against the statue. Later, at school, Ryan approaches Claire and asks if she has made any recent wishes. He reveals that he found his cousin Gina dead in her apartment. He then finally reveals what the engravings on the mystery box mean. Turns out that for every wish, the box is going to claim a life. Claire feels sorry for Gina's death, but she lies that she hasn't made any wish and leaves. In the cafeteria, she finally decides to date Paul, but the other students still make fun of her. As a result, Claire returns home and makes her fifth wish that she becomes the most popular girl in school. To her delight, Paul instantly invites her to a party, where only the popular kids hang out. When Claire reaches there, she is the star of the event. Everyone praises her with compliments, and Paul even kisses her passionately. That night, Claire experiences another nightmare of her mother's passing. When she wakes up, she notices someone stalking her from the balcony. Claire hurriedly runs after him, but the man is long gone. The next morning, when she goes to Mrs. DeLuca's residence, she finally finds her dead body. This makes her realize that the mystery box is indeed killing people. 
Claire promptly reports it to her friends, and while they don't believe her, they suggest that she throw away the mystery box, heeding their suggestion. Claire carries the box and proceeds to dump it in the trash. However, when she hears her dad playing the sax, she decides to hold on to it a bit longer. The following night, the school hosts a farewell party where all the students have gathered. As Claire is making out with Paul in his car, she asks for his phone. When she checks through his gallery, she is shocked to find her pictures there. This means that he is the person who has been stalking her at night. Claire immediately breaks up with him for this act, but Paul isn't going to give up on her. Later at the party, we see Meredith on the 27th floor playing a game. At the same time, the music box starts playing on its own. Poor Meredith is the next victim, and as soon as she enters the elevator, it plunges down at great speed. The impact kills her in an instant, leaving everyone horrified. Later, Ryan takes a traumatized Claire to his home to show her something. Turns out that he did some research on the box and found out that all of its previous owners committed the unthinkable after getting their seven wishes granted. This means that if Claire makes two more wishes, she will be killed too. Good. She has no regard for other people. To stop this from happening, the two try to destroy the box, but it proves to be an impossible task. So, Claire simply locks the mystery box inside a vent. That night, she is once again visited by her crazy ex, Paul. When she refuses to take him back, he slits his wrist in front of her. This prompts Claire to quickly call an ambulance for him. Unfortunately, in the morning, Claire and Ryan learn that the mystery box has gone missing. With its absence, the wishes it made also start to go away. The house is soon repossessed by the authorities, as Uncle August had a lot of unpaid taxes. This forces Claire and her dad to move back to their old cottage. Not only does she lose her wealth, she also loses all her popularity. Now, she's back to being the dumb, boring kid whom no one likes. Plus, she's a serial killer. Later at school, she discovers that it was actually June who stole the mystery box. The latter tries to claim that she did so for everyone's safety, but Claire doesn't listen. She angrily snatches the box away, and in the ensuing tussle, June falls off the stairs and injures herself. When Claire reaches home, she makes her sixth wish for her mother to return. Just like that, Shannon comes back to life and hugs her. Claire also discovers that she has two new siblings now. That day, the family has a wonderful time together, and Claire forgets all about her worries. But when she goes to the attic, she finds something shocking. Turns out her mom owned this music box before she did. It was the same thing she dumped at the start of the movie, and it was the same reason why she committed the unthinkable. Just then, the box starts playing an eerie song. Jonathan is currently in the garden, cutting some tree branches with his friend. This makes Claire realize that her father is in danger. She rushes to warn him about it, but her scream actually distracts Jonathan. As he removes his foot off the ladder, his friend loses balance and accidentally ends up decapitating Jonathan with his chainsaw. Devastated at the sight, Claire rushes back to her room and makes her final wish that she be taken back to the day when Jonathan found the box. Soon after, she wakes up from her nightmare and sees that her wish has come true. In this timeline, Max is still alive, and so are Meredith, Jonathan, Mrs. DeLuca, and even her uncle. Without wasting any time, Claire goes to the dumpster and takes out the mystery box before her father can find it. She then covers it with a cloth and hands it over to Ryan at school. Claire doesn't reveal what it is, but asks him to never open it. The latter is confused, as he doesn't even know Claire at this point, but she kisses him and asks him out on a date. As she proceeds to walk away, though, she is suddenly struck by Darcy's car. This kills her on the spot, making her the seventh and final victim. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.